climate change in Brazil, Salvador. Brazil, officially termed the Federative Republic of Brazil, is the largest country in both South America and the Latin American region. It is divided into 27 states and is the fifth largest country both by area and population. It is bounded by the Atlantic Ocean on the east and has a coastline of about 7,491 kilometers. It borders all other South American countries except for Ecuador and Chile and occupies 47.3% of the South American continent. Its Amazon River Basin includes a vast tropical forest which is home to a diverse wildlife, a variety of ecological systems, and an extensive natural resources spanning numerous protected habitats. This unique environmental heritage makes Brazil one of the 17 mega diverse countries and is subject of significant global interest and debate regarding deforestation and environmental protection. As we know that Brazil is divided into states, a state that is of particular interest in this video is the state of Bahia, which is circled in red. It is a northeastern Brazilian state with varied terrain from tropical coastline to desert-like area. Its capital is Salvador, which is located on the northeastern part of Bahia. Salvador lies on a small roughly triangular peninsula that separates the Bay of All Saints from the Atlantic Ocean. This bay is the largest in Brazil and the second largest in the world. Salvador has an, an elevation of about 8 meters above sea level. It features a tropical rainforest climate with no discernible dry season. Temperatures are relatively constant throughout the course of the year, but there is a monster threatening to totally destroy these constant climate patterns. This monster is climate change. Climate change can be described as the change in the statistical distribution of weather patterns when that change lasts for an extended period of time. These changes in climatic patterns are largely due to a phenomenon which is termed global warming. Global warming is described as the increase in Earth's average temperature due to the effect of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and many more. The sun's radiation is needed for life on Earth, basically to warm the Earth. This essential process works by the sun radiating energy to the Earth and the Earth absorbing this energy and reflecting the extra energy out of the Earth's atmosphere towards space. Now these greenhouse gases disturb this process by not allowing the reflected energy into outer space and trapping them in the Earth's atmosphere, therefore leading to an increased average temperature around the Earth. Global warming leads to a pile of negative effects to the environment. One of them is the melting of ice glaciers, leading to habitat destruction and rising sea water levels. This puts cities like Salvador at risk because they are in a coastline and rising seawater levels can start to engulf the coastline. In other areas, this global warming will lead to droughts, leading to food scarcity and water scarcity. Other effects of climate change include poor air quality, where sunlight, warm air and pollution from factories and cars combined to produce ground level ozone, popularly known as smog. It can also result in spreading of diseases because insects that are usually stopped by the winter cold months may, st may start to thrive all year round. It may st also lead to extreme heat which will lead to heat strokes and heat related diseases amongst people and ultimately natural disasters such as floods and wildfires. The effects of global warming are global and therefore must be fought at a global scale. This can only be achieved if every country and 
city does their part to fight global warming. But the question now becomes, how are these countries and cities going to combat climate change? Luckily, these two brilliant men, Robert Sekulow to the left of the image and Stephen Pakala to the right of the image came up with a way to frame global warming called stabilization wedge concept. The stabilization wedge concept is a simple tool for conveying the emission cut that can be made to avoid dramatic climate change. It can be used by countries and cities to decrease carbon emissions to minimize climate change. The stabilization wedge theory considers two futures, which are carrying on business as usual and not cutting down on any of the emissions. This is indicated by the dotted line on the graph as the currently projected path. The other future is to actually cut down on emissions and stabilize emissions by 2050. This is indicated by the flat path on the graph. If this is to be achieved, we need to cut down the difference between projected path and the flat path. This is indicated by the stabilization triangle colored in green. Cutting the stabilization triangle is made easier by dividing the triangle into eight wedges. Each of these wedges will then represent a strategy that a country or city can use in order to combat climate change. In our case, specifically Salvador can cut down its emissions by considering strategies that are under the following headings. Efficiency on conservation, fuel-based strategies, nuclear energy, renewable energy, and bio-storage. In general, Brazil's public transportation systems are defective. Now in Salvador, which is home to about 2.8 million people, has one of the most unreliable public transport systems in the whole of Brazil. This will generally lead to people not wanting to rely on it and thus working towards buying their own cars, which then leads to a larger carbon footprint per individual. This leads us to our first wedge, which is improving the, 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 the transport conservation. This strategy is dedicated to increasing the efficiency of the transport system in Salvador through transport infrastructure investments by government and private companies. Increased efficiency in the transport system will lead to people being more reliant and trusting the transport system in Salvador. This would cut down the number of kilometers that the average motorist in Salvador drives. This would be a considerable cut in the emissions of the city. We then go on to our second wedge, which is transport efficiency. This wedge will require the government to put pressure on car manufacturing companies to produce fuel efficient cars that can drive more kilometers per liter of fuel. The cities of Salvador can then work towards making fuel efficient cars more accessible to the public and portray them as a cheaper alternative as you spend less on fuel but you drive more. This will allow motorists to release the same number, the same amount of emissions for double the distance they drive. This is an amazing way of cutting carbon emissions. The third wedge can be achieved by improving the efficiency in electricity production. This wedge can be achieved by creating incentive-based regulatory systems approach for power plants in Salvador, where they would be rewarded for reaching certain target and reducing their carbon emissions and increasing their efficiency. Wedge number four, forest storage. This wedge is a wedge that is based on renewable and bio storage. Salvador generally has a tropical rainforest climate, which is ideal for many plants and trees. Salvador 
can invest in the planting of more trees and the conservation of already existing rainforests with the main aim of increasing the carbon sink capacity of the biosphere in this region. The fifth wedge that can be considered by Salvador is fuel switching for electricity where Salvador turns to natural gas power stations. This would result in a considerable decrease in the amount of emissions because producing electricity with natural gas results in only about half the emissions of producing electricity using coal. The sixth wedge is based on the renewable energy and biostorage strategies. It can be achieved by unlocking the wind power potential in the state of Bahia by investing in the wind turbines and reserving parks for these turbines. This wind power can then serve to replace coal-based power stations in the state, thus cutting down carbon emissions by a large amount. Wedge number seven. Solar electricity can also play a significant role in the cutting of carbon emissions. This wedge requires the distribution of photovoltaic cells that convert sunlight into electricity. These alternative power solutions can be divided across Salvador where certain areas use natural gas, others wind power and others solar power. This will cut down emissions that would otherwise be released by huge coal plants. For the last wedge, Salvador may also start considering and investing in the idea of nuclear energy. This type of energy production has 0% carbon emission, but has a disadvantage that in that infrastructure for the, the nuclear plants can be quite expensive. It is quite evident that this stabilization with theory would be quite effective in the combat against climate change. Even though it might be very effective, the, the ball still lies in our court. Because if even if we do have the best theories and the best tools to fight global climate change, to fight global warming, it is still it still goes back to us whether we are informed whether everyone is doing their part or not and remember this could be our last chance to literally save the world for future generations it all depends on our will to save it or not